Cinema Camera 6K Pro just arrived while I was at work and I rushed home to uh, meet the UPS driver. The, the doorbell just rang. The doorbell just rang. Oh God, come on. Go. Oh, 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 oh. I told you, I told you. There he is. Oh. I'm here. I'm here, UPS truck driver. Don't go anywhere. Coming from a GH4 that I had to figure out all the bits and how to put it together, what lens I should use. I'm going to use a micro four thirds lens or uh, some other lens. Um, I had a bunch of Nikon lenses left over because of um, I had a 35 millimeter adapter for my HMC 150 to give it a you know cinematic look um, and that had a Nikon adapter so we bought Nikon glass for it. When I got my GH4 with a Micro Four Thirds I decided that the adapter I would get for that would be a Nikon to Micro Four Thirds and um, had to learn that, had to figure out how to connect that, um, had to figure out which cages would work best, had to figure out you know I should get an external monitor and what should I use for that and all this stuff. And uh, today, you know, after a lot of research, what I felt was something that I wanted the most was the, um, out of all the cameras that are currently out there right now, that I wanted the most in my price range was the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6K Pro. And because it is vastly different in form and function from my GH4, and I keep looking over there because it's sitting there, the GH4, I had to sort of start from the ground up with research on this on this new camera because it shoots in a codec I haven't shot before and what will I what will I edit on and what type of media because my little SD cards are nowhere near big or fast enough to record so there all this stuff I had to learn batteries I'm used to my little Panasonic batteries these thin little things that lasted all day now the the uh, Black Magic is going to last just like an hour on one of these batteries. It is shooting 6K rather than 4K. It is shooting raw rather than compressed H.264. So I get all that, but... So I bought a whole bunch of little things all at once after plenty of research in hopes that it'll all come together. And I'm now going to open them in reverse order of importance. I actually already opened up one thing. And what I opened already was a bunch of little batteries that would normally last a long time. I should put these down right there. I got Castar from, from Amazon because I'm, after much deliberation and research, for my purposes, the, um, the battery grip was something I wanted to go with over a V-mount battery for now. I've done the research. I know the positives and the negatives on each but for my situation, what I shoot, how I shoot with my budget, it seems like this will be a good choice. Now it might not be. This is all, I have to try to figure this all out. And maybe I'll need a V-mount, in which case I will get a V-mount later on when I've earned a little bit more money. It's not the end of the world. This is not all etched in stone. I can upgrade. So this little Kelstar, uh, Castar thing is four, and it came in this box, and then each little battery came in its own box. Battery for camera and camcorder. I don't remember the uh, milliamps, does it say out so before I open up the actual battery? Nope, I'm gonna have to open up the actual battery. For some reason, I hate ripping the packaging. I don't know why. I try to open it up as cleanly as possible, but these types of boxes... And it's ripped. Also, I'm a little shaky because uh, coffee and the excitement of this is a 2900. So, 
that. Look at this nightmare. It's ripped. Look at this nightmare. Unbelievable. So because I film on sets, I don't really do a lot of run and gun, which I, I'm sick of that term because I, just, I hear it all the time in all these product reviews that I watch. Everybody says, for my stuff, I'm more of a run and gun. And while I, I like to make films with actors on a set and I like to pl have everything planned out, I'm not running and gun it. So for me, that means the battery grip I think would work. Um, I know that the camera, they, some people say that the camera on the battery grip, there was a little bit of wobble but I got the new small rig cage that covers the whole camera and the battery grip. So I'm hoping everything will stay tight together. And because that battery inside the camera is always there, I can take out one battery set from the battery grip and put in another. That's why I have four here. So there's that, that's one. All right, first package that I haven't opened up yet. I believe this is the lens adapter because, right, so they, right, all my Nikon glass. The camera, the Black Magic, is only Canon. Um, so I was debating, do I go ahead and get the Canon attachment version of the Sigma 18 to 35, which is the lens that I have, or do I just get an attachment, uh, an adapter that can put my Nikon adapted 18 to 35 onto a Canon. And I almost purchased one that did not have a manual aperture ring. But at last minute, I got it. And it's hideously expensive. Lens mount adapter, there it is. See if it has the blue, the little blue handles on it that which it looks ugly. The one that I have for my um, GH4 doesn't have any blue things. It's just the, the ring around the adapter rotates. You just hold the ring and rotate it. These have blue handles. And these little blue handles to rotate it. I don't really care for the blue handles. But there it is, and there's no glass in the middle. It's literally just a metal ring to adapt the lens, so there still is no uh, camera control of anything. And that's how I've been doing it on my GH4 for years, and I'm fine, I'm comfortable with it. They are still recording good. <sighs> the next thing from Amazon, no address pointed at the camera. I think this is the Samsung hard drive. I also, because it was on a hot flash, hot streak, hot sale, whatever, the SanDisk 2 terabyte Extreme Rugged Pro hard drive version 2 was on sale for like almost 50% off for a day. So I, I grabbed that quick. It looks like it works with this camera. I mean, I know that the um, Blackmagic is only, uh, the USB is only 3.0 or 3.1 version one. And then USB 3.2 is now called USB 3.1 version two, whatever they call it. So the USB is going to be a bottleneck, but it's nice to have that extra headroom on this drive, and maybe I can use this drive as an editing drive for the Blackmagic. I know the big thing about S the Samsung drive is that you can shoot and edit on it. I do feel, however, that I will be shooting too much um, that I would shoot on it and edit on it. Also, I would like to have a redundant copy of my footage. So once I'm done shooting for the day, I don't care if it's time consuming. Time consuming doesn't matter to me. What matters to me is that I don't lose the footage. I am more than happy to go to sleep, grab a cup of coffee, watch a show, do something else while the footage copies over. <laughs> time well spent. Whatever I'm doing, it's time well spent. 
as footage is copied over, not moved over, and then the Samsung is erased. So footage here, copied over, footage in two places, edit on this, and should anything ever go wrong, not the backup. And then when I'm done that, I haven't bought this yet, but I'm going to probably buy a Western Digital 12 terabyte hard drive. It's not standard, it's not an, uh, not standard, it's not an SSD, solid state. So that would just be for long-term backups. And should I ever need to edit again, it's going to take a long time to copy over, but that's fine. I will schedule my life around copying that over. And yes, this is the T5. So this will go onto my camera. This is where the footage will first be recorded onto. And I got the handle, the small rig handle that this drive can sit slide into because the small rig cage that includes the battery grip does not have the little metal slot, I don't believe, where I could slide this into the cage itself. So I did get the handle uh, that this slides right into, which I thought was a cool feature. I think Tilta does that also, but. Okay. Next thing is, dang it. I had to cut that out because my address was on the bottom as well. Um, this is from Adorama and this is the battery grip. I know it's the battery grip because it's the only thing I got from Adorama. I bought this battery grip as an open box product. So instead of it being $159, it was $90. Holy crap, look, it comes in the box. Look at the fancy plastic. It looks like it's brand new. Thank you for shopping with Adorama. We appreciate your business. At Adorama, we always strive to give our customers the best in quality and service. Should you find that this item is not to your satisfaction, please contact our customer service department. At ba -ba 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 -ba. We pay top dollar for used photo, video, and lighting equipment. Get a fast, free quote online. So this is the 6K Pro version of the battery grip, where there is no... Um, plastic piece that sticks up that fits into the battery grip. Um, the phone's done, so right, this is the battery grip that does not have the little black piece that goes into the battery compartment of the camera. It connects to these little sensor dots right there, little sensor pieces, power connection. Um, it has a mounting point, and I think it has, does that, it says mounting pin, right? It provides additional stability and security. So it has a mounting pin, so the battery grip wouldn't twist underneath the camera like this. I heard, though, that the camera did like this. The battery grip has something built in, so it doesn't do that, which is great, but the whole cage around it. But this is very cool. I guess I should start opening this up. Oh, look at the picture. So this is... um. Very nice looking package, the way they, they really made it look almost brand new. All right, well, we, we'll, I'll actually get to that next then. So the top of the box is here, but I'm gonna keep it up here. Oh, okay, so I guess I am gonna need a razor. Razor, got it. Okay, so the next um, item is this, and I believe this is the cage. I don't see the words small or rig on here. So for the cage here, to get a deal on this, I was going to um, just buy the kit that they were selling. They had a kit that was the cage and the handle and the this and the that. And if you bought that all together, um, it would discount the price of all of those things by about 15%, I think it was, or 10% in, in total. It was like 10%, it wasn't 15, was it? And then when I went to checkout, I saw that the discount was applied using a code that was pre-plugged in. So I was like, let me try something, because I don't want everything in this kit. There's a couple things I, I don't want. And there was like a handle I wanted instead of the other handle, so I removed the handle and added this thing else, and, and I replaced a few things and I took some things off and actually got the total, the subtotal, lower than what the kit was. And the discount 
percentage was still applied. I couldn't believe it, but I wasn't ready to check out yet. So I closed the browser, went about my day, went to my job. And when I went back to the website, the code was gone. I was like, oh, okay. So I was only getting the discount because I guess I was still in the shopping cart. And I knew what the code was, so I typed it back in manually because it says, do you have any codes? Typed it back in and the kit code worked and I was getting a discount again on what I happened to, to purchase. But then right when I was about to check out finally, because I still wasn't ready to purchase, I just wanted to keep researching and check the cart and see what the prices were and try other things and see what those prices were. Right when I finally had figured out what I wanted, I wanted to go to checkout. I was like, wait a minute, what about retailmenot.com? And I went there and there was a coupon for even a larger discount. And I entered that in and it worked. It was even more of a discount than what the 15% kit code was. It brought it down like $78 more. It brought it down $78. Less? $78 less? I don't know. So I saved a bunch of money on, on this guy. And I price compared it to let, what if I bought it on Amazon and I used my 5% cash back Amazon credit card and got points. Um, that still, it, even if I, you know, using the points and, and the 5% cash back stuff, it still wasn't as cheap as buying it directly from small rig. And also I want to support the companies directly not support Amazon, even though obviously I got stuff from Amazon. I'm trying to not do that as much. And I compared it with what if I bought it on eBay? And what I did was I put stuff in my cart in Amazon and eBay and small rig, left it in my cart because sometimes if you leave things in your cart for a while, a week or two, they'll email you and be like, hey, there's this thing still in your cart. You haven't checked out. Maybe this coupon would be an incentive to finish your purchase. And sure enough on eBay, they actually did send me an offer for even a cheaper price. But even with that cheaper price on eBay, on something that was already discounted, um, the retail me not coupon was made the small rig at the small rig website the cheapest. So I went with the small rig website using the retail me not code after checking B and H, eBay, Amazon, Adorama. Now Mr. Mimi's here. Wee oui, wee, oui, please. Oh, okay. All right. I thought I was going to just see one thing, but there's a bunch of little boxes. Small rig mini quick release NATO rail. Because I did get two handles. I got the side handle and I got the up, the uppy handle. NATO handle. Wheels for the Samsung T5. I hear something rattling in there. Is that good? Ding, 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 ding. You hear that ding, ding, ding? Maybe it's like the nuts and the Allen wrench. This is the small ring NATO top handle. Okay. Side handle, top handle. Let's go for this tiny, 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 tiny thing here. Small rig HDMI to USB-C cable clamp. small rig sun hood that was part of the kit and i was like yeah all right i'll, I'll take that for the kit i do shoot outside I, i've shot a lot of outside stuff people seem to like that i know it's a bright enough screen it's got all of the crazy nits in the world but and i guess it's got to be the cage itself it's so light what the heck small rig battery grip compatible cage So this isn't the right dimensions, but right, they come in separate pieces and then you have to clamp them together. Okay, so that makes sense. Okay. Hold on, I'm not doing... Oh! I must fall off the chair.
I see my address here and here, so let's not show that. Got some a little bit of packing paper here to fill up the last little bit of gap in the box. This is a set, do not um, separate. So right, the, um, the camera itself I got from Kellerd's. They had two listings on Amazon that were sets, kits, sets. They had the camera with um, a battery base, the Core S, XW or SWX or WSX, whatever. And I heard mixed reviews about that. I was kind of looking at the Anton Bauer Titan battery plate, battery base. And also, so because of the Titan or just a traditional V-mount, I wasn't really sure what I wanted to go with with those two. So the battery grip just, I just went with that. Because uh, my camera, my I'm just used to my GH4 that had, everything was part of it. I didn't need rails to, to use stuff. I had a cage that I was able to attach things to, and that's just what I was used to. So I figured if I'm going to move up, let me start with something that's similar to that setup. Even if it's not totally practical, we'll see. Again, none of this is set in stone. I can upgrade if I need to. I can, I can get a V-mount battery. It's not the end of the world. I'm, I'm talking to you like I'm trying to calm you down, but it's actually me talking to myself trying to calm me down. And I'm waving my hands, but the scalpel thing, <laughs> box scalpel is closed, so I'm not going to cut myself. Okay, so anyway, right, Kellerds came with um, kits, and one of them was the battery base, and the other was this, which came with one or two extra batteries and a little SD card, and then something else, right? Um, yeah. But it was for the exact same price as the camera. It was no more expensive. So they, it's been getting an extra battery and an extra something else for free. Whereas the Core, it was only like $100 more, but if you bought buy the Core separately, it's like 200 something dollars, so you were definitely saving money on it, but I just, I did the math there too. I said, well, what if I got I used, I used a, the numbers spreadsheet. I said, what if I got a camera with the battery grip and all the accessories that would need to work with that? And what if I got the camera with this deal with the core and what would I need to have that be all built up? And at first the core actually came out a little cheaper or only like $10 more or something. It was very close. They were very close. It was a little bit more, a little bit less. But if I wanted a second set of batteries, if I got a second core, I am now paying 250 bucks. Whereas if I want more batteries for the battery grip, I just get another one of these for like 30, 40 bucks. And each time I want to get another set of these for the battery grip, it's another 40 bucks. Whereas every time I want to get another core, that's another $250. So the more batteries that I need to buy, the more it will add up. And I also did the pricing for a V-mount battery. Yes, it would last the longest, but now I need rails. So I'd have to buy that too. I need, would need to get the rail attachment to go to the cage. That costs money. I would need the cheese plate thing for the V-mount. I do want to look at the screen. I know a lot of people bump that battery right up against their screen and then use an external monitor. I wouldn't like to work that way. So I found one that flips like basically upside down. It goes underneath the, the rails. And you can have the battery, the V-mount sitting down there while the rails are up here and, and the camera's up here, and that would be great. Um, but again, that costs money. This, to me, in my research, this looked like it was the cheapest option. Okay. I do love that the battery grip from Adorama came with the box and everything, so it's got the black magic box. I like that. I'll have the black magic box for that and the black magic box for this. A lot of air bags here. 
turn back here. <gasps> okay, so that was the other thing. It came with a little SD card. I was just talking about how my SD cards, there's no way they'd be powerful enough. This one's only 64 gigabytes, but it is V62 and U3 and class 10 or something, right? Yeah, um, oh, I'm trying to look at the card itself, but the numbers are right down there, so. If you can read that, I don't know. It's the giant C that's almost a circle with a 10 inside. It's the U shape, like a little trash can with a three. It's a V60, it says 4K. I thought that I could at least use this for, um, if I did ever shoot 4K, or um, if it can hold 6K, I would, it's, but only a little bit, that's fine. Leo, please! That's okay if it only shoots a little bit because like maybe um, I could do something with um, like a glide cam or something, or not a glide cam, but um, one of the gimbals or something. Um, you know, once we plan it out, I can try shooting and recording onto something like this instead of the hard drive, which would just add that much more weight. I know it's not that much, but every little bit matters. So we'll see. Oh God, there's the, there it is. I just had my first look at the box. Oh my God. Leo! Okay, so. There's the Watson battery. Is this a battery charger? There should be an actual battery in here. Okay, yes, there is. Watson. Watson. And this battery is 2200 milliamps. So not as large as these ones, but this one will just, my plan, we'll see if it works, is to leave this one in the camera. Unless, does the camera itself come with its own battery too? I don't think so, but... So this replaces the NPF330, the NPF550, and the NPF570. Um, so I guess those are all the same physical size, but maybe they hold slightly different capacities, slightly different amounts of juice. And a little charger. Never go wrong with too many chargers, I guess. I found a little car charger. So... That's interesting. Oh God. Leo, it's every time big things happen, that's right when you make noise. I know, please stop it. Listen, I, I gave him food, I gave him treats. I tried to make him as happy as possible before I did this, but his timing is impeccable always. sure I want to open it. I'm afraid to open it. Ugh. I'm afraid to open it. The box feels heavier than I thought it would feel for whatever reason, even though people were saying this was a heavy camera. 6K Pro, that is it. There's UHS two 6K recorders. No, leave, go, leave, get out of here. It's been 37 minutes, I guess. That's more than enough quiet time that I, I should have expected. Oh God, I just don't want to do something wrong. I don't want to open this up or in a wrong way, like rip it or something. And the phone's ringing, Leo's meowing and I, I'm just nervous to open it up and it not be what I needed or what if I change my mind later on. And I did so much research, and finally here we are, and I'm like all worried, like what if, what if it's the wrong thing? <sighs> I don't know why I feel that way. It's so tightly wrapped in the plastic, I don't know where to safely cut it. I don't want to scratch the box up. There's other dog barking across the street. <sighs> oh, God. Look at him. Advanced portable design, cinematic 6K sensor, professional media, 
There's the Samsung T5 in the picture. I did not get the uh, EVF viewfinder. Way too much money for such a tiny little thing. I don't know why it's so much money. Oh, God. I feel sick in the best way possible. I definitely think this is the, yeah, this is the opening. It's such a pristine plastic. Oh, God, Leo, you're back in your... It's all day, except I'm doing this. There's someone at the cardboard. I'm just saying that, like, the battery, the cardboard, the way they, like, fold in on the corners, I always rip things and, oh, God. I don't want to rip this. How do you, there's, I know there's some trick. I can never remember what it is. <clears throat> Why do they make the boxes like this? One little crease right there now. Damn it. For fuck's sake, I made a damn crease in it. Son of a bitch. Fuck me, god damn it. It's not cut or anything. This is the little notch in the styrofoam that allows me to reach my thumb under the welcome. <gasps> it comes with a sticker. And the studio, the studio license, I guess. Oh, but oh. already done stuck a little bit. Hmm. Oh, it's like a credit card. I deliberately not tried not to watch the unboxings of these too much because I just wanted to be surprised myself. So that was one of the few areas of research where I really was like, no, 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 no. I don't want to see that yet. I want to have the unboxing experience for myself. Okay, so yeah, sure enough, there's a code on the back where I, that I've covered along this white strip. Product activation key. When you am I still recording? Yes. Okay. When you first start using DaVinci Resolve Studio or Fusion Studio, enter the activation key. I thought Fusion was part of DaVinci. And there's a serial number. I'm glad I waited too. I was thinking about getting Vlog L for the Panasonic, but I was hearing mixed reviews about how that worked. That at the compression that you were getting, it just it didn't really make sense to shoot. Vlog and a hundred bucks for it, and they have to send you a physical card. Now this is crazy. But now, but now I have much better log in a much better codec. Thank you. We're very excited you purchased a Black Magic Design product for your work. We've spent thousands of hours in research and development to ensure you get precision engineering combined with the latest technology. However, this is only possible because of your support. Our dream has always been to empower creativity in the film and television industry by making the tools affordable. With your help, this dream has come true. I hope you get many years of use from your new Blackmagic design product, and we look forward to hearing from you. Getting started. Online manual, latest software, learn more. Download instruction manual. Did you know we have an instruction manual in English? That's what it says. In English? Really? Get started by scanning the QR code or go to Blackmagic Design slash welcome. And that is a forward slash, by the way. People keep saying backslash for those things. It's a forward slash. 
It's leaning to the right, the direction that you read. Forward, you read forward. It's leaning forward. It's got a forward slash. So yeah, I... My very first... Um, okay, well, let's go way, way back. My very, very, very first video camera that my parents bought me when I was 13 was a Sony camcorder. It had the special ability that if you wrote with dark, a dark color, black preferably, but any this dark color on a white surface, white piece of paper, white whatever, you could basically take a picture of that with the camcorder. You press a button, it actually recorded it, and all the white would be transparent. It, it wouldn't, that would be clear, transparent, and what you wrote would be the only thing that's visible. And so you could write like wide-eyed pictures, and now you had the handwritten wide-eyed pictures, and you could superimpose that on any footage. And again, the white would just be erased. There'd be no white paper. It would be just the what you wrote. And it could drop down from the top, it could come up from the bottom, I think it could come from the side, and you could change it to whatever color you wanted. It was a pixelated representation of your drawing, a little pixelated. It wasn't like the most perfect photographic, perfect image, but it was really awesome. another edition of IKEA Talk. The rejected man. So, um, I had a love for Sony cameras early on. Um, I did not own but worked with a Sony VX2000 decades later when I went to college. Um, but my first camera, big professional camera that wasn't the Sony Handycam was a Canon XL1. It was the Canon XL1. So Canon had a place in my heart um, for since that point. And then they had the XL1S or XL1 something. Then they had the XL2, I, but I only had the XL1. Um, I shot my college films on it if I wasn't shooting on the Bolex 16 millimeter. And then um, the um, who I was working with, William. Um, he got the DVX 100A. William, stop it! He had a Panasonic DVX 100A, and it was the first camera to shoot 24 frames. It's a video. 24 frames a second, video frames a second, and that changed our game entirely. 24 frames a second was the magic secret sauce that made our films look like films. He showed me some some shaky, just handheld work at a live event that he, he was at that he shot with, and I'm just like, this, this looks like a documentary. This looked like a, like a legit, <laughs> documentary that you would see in the theater or on TV. I, I couldn't believe it, even though it was just four by three, it was f full frame, right? Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't widescreen, it was um, four by three. Um, it's not super high resolution. It was SD four by three, but that 24 frames a second, unbelievable. It made everything look better. The colors seemed better. I don't know if the color science was any different um, I guess it's different than Sony, but um, I, I just, I couldn't believe it. And I ended up buying a DVX 100A also. And I had that for years, years, a really long time. And I eventually, finally, people, everyone was already on HD cameras and I was still shooting with a DVX 100A. They all had these HDs and some of them were going to DSLRs. That was becoming big. Um, and I ended up, I still wanted to stay in the Panasonic family, so I got the Panasonic, uh, HMC 150. 
that was what I settled on. It had the features that I wanted the, in the camera body that I wanted, the XLR ports, the handle, the this, the that. It shot, it recorded on a little card. Love that, and it was Panasonic. It was, it was, it had the colors and the look that I was used to, the image and the style that you're used to. Um, and then when it came, I, years later, when DSLRs were the thing, that was what everybody was using at this point. Now, I really wanted to, I really wanted to try to actually be up to date with everyone. All my cameras are always so far behind. The XL1 I got like early on, so I was actually ahead of the curve there, but ever since then I was I was behind behind the times. Um and when I, I was finally decided on a DSLR or DSLR style camera and that was the Panasonic GH4. I was like, "Oh, Panasonic has a series of DSLR mirrorless DSLR style mirrorless cameras so that sounds like that would be a good entry for me it's it's in the Panasonic family so I feel comfortable with that and the big thing was that it was 4k where a lot of cameras weren't 4k and everyone's saying who needs 4k you don't need 4k there's not even 4k televisions like around there's not that many 4k televisions it's crazy YouTube doesn't support 4k why do you need 4k because I wanted to future-proof. I wanted to future-proof my films for one. So if I wanted to um, submit something as 4K, I could. I could submit 4K to YouTube and it would become available in 4K once they supported 4K. Because YouTube, when you upload, they keep that original file if it's 4K. And if they've only support transcoding up to 1080 or t uh, 2K, then that's all that'll be available to the viewers, but that 4K is sitting there, and eventually they're going to support it, and now you can... But also, um, I had exceptional 1080p footage. I had 4K, and I would scale it down to 1080, and I was just... To me, my footage crushed the 1080 footage that was out there. Or, um, I could not scale it as far down, and I could... You know, I have resolution to reframe, and to punch in, and to stabilize. There was just so many reasons to get 4K. I, I didn't understand why people said you shouldn't get it. I, it made no sense to me. And now it's like I blink and all of a sudden they've gone from you shouldn't be using 4K because nobody's using it. I blink and it's you shouldn't use 4K because that's not enough. All of a sudden it's 6K, it's 8K. The Ursa Mini is 12K. Um, so... Um, yeah, so when I was looking at my next camera, I was like, do I go for another DSLR style camera? Do I go for the GH5? I was looking at that when that came out, the GH5S I was really intrigued about. There's the GH6 announcement, but that's still not going to be 6K raw, internal, all this stuff. So it's like, I don't know. I've been with Canon, I've, I've been with Panasonic for so long now, the DVX 100A. The HMC 150, the GH4. Am I finally going to make the switch? Okay. We have two notches here, so I can pull this out. Oh my god. There it is. Oh my god, there's the actual camera. It's just a little speck of something on there. Oh my god, there it is. Oh my god. So we got plugs if I travel. I'm not traveling with this thing. We got a plug. Oh, it, did, it does come with a battery. Okay. And a black magic design strap. Which a lot of people say who's gonna who would use this? It's a cinema camera. You're not going to be having it hanging over your shoulder. I agree. However, depending on how this hooks up, I might hook it up to the cage. And if there's any handheld work, one of the things I do to stabilize my footage, because this doesn't have image stabilization, is get the strap around your neck, kind of pull it tight, and just kind of put the camera, pull the camera till it's tight. Not 
not choking you or pulling on the back of your neck till it's painful, but just get it taut enough. And that helps stabilize some jitter. So we'll see if I can do that, if that attaches to the cage. So I'm not taking this camera out of the cage to put just this on it, if that's how it goes. And there's little plugs. Okay. What is that plug? That looks like just an American plug, but that's already on there. Right there. That looks like it's already a normal plug, so why is that in the adapter? This already... Oh, no, it doesn't. Oh, they're just two tiny little nubs. I thought it was something that folded out. All oh, right, but it's a P-tap. Another thing I've never used before. P-tap. I'm sure I'm recording for this. Take the styrofoam out? No? Alright, then you're just coming out with you're coming out camera. I just wondered where the monitor strap was, because you can bend it all around. But there it is, it's, there is a little, oh, you can't barely see it, there is a strap there. Look at that little, there's just a little piece of cloth. Is there anything bad with me just keeping this little piece of fabric cloth in there? I'm gonna take it out right now. Why can't I just keep it in there? I didn't mind blowing on it because there's a screen protector still on it. Holy crap, this does not feel that heavy. It's heavy-ish, but I already like just this little tiny nub that kind of stays to the right of your thumb. It feels, it allows me to put some weight on my thumb. What is the first button I'm actually gonna press? I think I'm gonna press this record button first. It's the first button I'm ever gonna press. Okay, little tactile, a little mushy. Let's try the camera shutter button. Same thing. White balance, same. S, I guess, is shutter. And ISO. The on off button is a nice chunky switch. The ND filter buttons have a little bit more of a snappy, clicky feel to them. Ooh, these two buttons are very mushy. The HFR is very mushy. The, the magnifying glass is mushy. The menu is mushy and the play is mushy. Very thick rubber attachments here. There are covers for the ports. I know people have taken these things off. It's easier when you're on the cage. I will probably not do that. Just in case I ever want to resell this. I just keep thinking that as soon as I buy this, the 6K Pro, 
Max or the 6K Pro 2 or the 8K Pro is going to come out. I'm comfortable not having the latest and greatest. That's what my cameras were for the longest time, but I'd like to at least feel like I have a good camera for a while. All right, well, I'm not even gonna put it down. I'm not even putting it down on the ground. I have to assemble these things. I'm going to do that next, but I'm gonna stop the recording here. I also need to just breathe. Oh no, oh no, 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 that was stupid. I just closed the box all the way up, but okay, good. I don't wanna to have to dent it again, so I'm leaving you open. Thank you for watching the unboxing. Up next will be the assembly. Okay. All right. I'm back. And I've shifted myself over a little bit because I have here uh, my GH4 in its little cage. And I had not even opened up the small rack stuff. So, I don't know what the heck to do first. I have um, my lens caps here for the Sigma. Um, so I guess I'll probably, I'll probably just do this first so I can get the GH4 out of the way. I don't even want to say that. This is the camera that I, okay, it, the, the camera itself is dwarfed by the lens. It's crazy. Um, and I have an uh, anamorphic adapter on that too, so. Um, this is crazy, man. This is crazy. Um, so we'll put the anamorphic on. Um, the Sigma had a glass element, had a, just a UV filter. And then the UV filter had the lens cap on it. So I'm like screwing on a lens cap, but it's really, there's a lens cap all by itself. There's the, um, uh, the APS-C Nikon to the Micro Four Thirds. And here's the Nikon lens. So I will cap this for now, because this is, I plan to put this onto the Black Magic. Oh, God. I guess I'll work on the cage first. I guess I'll work on the cage first. So is this taped? Oh, it slides out. Eco-friendly, small step changes the big world. Small step changes the big world. Small steps, is it supposed to be plural? It does feel like recyclable cardboard, which is great, I love it. Ah, there's the tape. Don't cut the box. There we go. Don't ruin the box like the battery box. Good. Come on. What's your major malfunction? There's no tape on it. Ow. And it got a little messed up. Oh, sideways. Oh. Foam here, some cutouts, whoa. 6K Pro battery grip compatible cage, the 3382. If you're curious, this is the 3382. I like that every single product that Small Rig makes has a unique number, model number, and it's a simple number. It's not like the Apple model numbers where it's M slash A, blah, 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 blah. It's like a hundred digits. So this should have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight screws. All right. I guess before I even open up the rest of the stuff, let's just start building this. I'm probably gonna use this as a little mat, little floor mat. Oh, usage steps, usage. 
Step one, connect the top plate and the left side plate. Tighten the screws. Well, does this box tell you what's what? Design for 6K Pro, not designed ED, just design. Okay, well, connect the top plate. I know the top plate because I can see the word small rig at the top, the logo, so I know this is the top. That's clearly a top. I mean, just the design of it. You see that that's the top of it. That is some solid, that is some solid steel metal. Listen to that. I was going to hit it with the, with this thing, but I'm just, <laughs> I don't want to scratch it up. All right. The side with the little flash thing, okay. Left side plate, okay. I'm just gonna go to the next slot. I've started from the top slot. Let's go down to the next slot and see if that's even the left side plate. That would be cool if they had put things in that order. This looks like the, it has a little cutout here. Let's check the next slot just to see. This is definitely the bottom. Yep, that's, that's, that's the bottom, all right. And then what is this guy over here? It says, does, oh, no, the very, the very bottom. That's definitely it. Because there's the NATO rail thing on the side. I got a second NATO rail for the top, for the top handle, but this has it built in. NATO rail, okay. This, and that, they go together like that. Okay, there's another clanking. And it uses two screws. All right, let's find those two screws. There's a little bag in here and this little tiny square. I count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And a small little Allen wrench. Two Allen wrenches. And a big fat screw. Okay, do not want to lose these, I'll tell you that much. Okay, so we'll take one. Now which Allen wrench does which? That does that. Okay. Oh! Oh boy. Um, it's gonna hold this between my legs, I guess. Don't move. Don't move. This is good. You don't. Wait. I feel like something's weird about this. Oh, wait. Hold on. Wait a minute. Hold on now. Hold the phone, peeps. There it is. I had... I was putting it this way. I was putting it this way. It should have been this way. Yeah, where this little L thing faces the front. Okay, got it. That's a lot easier. And it holds one in. Once a win, it can be through. Seemed like it was not going to line up at all. It seemed impossible to line up for a second once I put the screw in, but there we go. It's almost like a sandy texture. It feels like I'm sort of grinding through a little bit of sand. Which tells me that, you know, these are freshly drilled holes and maybe there's still a little bit of um, metal shards in there. Oh, there we go. All right. I can, I can see how they... Stop it! They fit together so smooth. Perfect. That's why it was so difficult because there was really only one very specific way to to pop these in. They fit perfectly, I like that. I like how perfect it is that there's... <laughs> oh, what's the gun? What's the side? Take one. I can take one. All right. Step one is completed, and boy, it looks like it's like one single piece of metal. You have to look real closely to see that, oh, it's divided. That's pretty, it's actually two separate pieces. Very cool. Step two is the bottom. Connect the left side plate and the bottom plate. But this is one, two, three, and four, but really it's, that's not accurate. What is the left side plate? Is it my left when I'm behind the camera operating it or is it the left side if I'm looking at the camera from the front? Because I show most of these pictures from the front and that would be the left side over here, but, and they haven't, they haven't labeled them in this one main picture. It says connect the top plate and the left side plate. Okay, so, and that is this, all right, fine. Connect the left side plate and the bottom plate. Tighten the screws. All right, okay. 
on the bottom plate. This is definitely the bottom plate. You're telling me the big thing there? Okay. Why does that not seem right? Let's look at the big picture. Okay. Right, so that is on the front. And I, you want me to connect like that. Oh, I see. Okay, I see how that drawing was going. Got it. All right. I wish these were a little magnetic. Like some of those. Oh, but it halted. It's actually holding it. How about that? It's going to hold it. Okay, it's going in. Now, I don't know what the balance is of how tight do I make these screws. Because on the one hand, you don't want it to fall apart, so you want it to be as tight as can be, I would think. But then can you over-tighten to the point where you start stripping the threads of the metal pieces, the threads in the holes? I want to be able to disassemble this if I need to at some point, if I want to resell it. And also, like, maybe all of these screws need to be a little loose until all the pieces are together, and then you go through and tighten everything completely, like I've seen. But maybe that's just me from, like, a drummer standpoint. When um, you tune drum sets, um, drum heads, there's about eight hex screws around it, and you don't just go one, two, you don't go one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four four o'clock around like that, you need to go this side and then the complete opposite side over here, then maybe this guy and then the opposite side there, and you just alternate. So I almost feel like I have to do that with screwing in metal too. I screw a little bit this, a little bit of that, get, get them all tight enough that it's holding, but not totally tight. Wait, wait till everything's together and then go through and, and tighten, tighten. Align the right side plate with the top plate and bottom plate at the same time and put in the screws. There's only, they all, just like this. And now that I see this, like the shape is very exact, I assume that I'll know. Oh, oh yeah, there's a little, there's a little flat piece of metal at the very bottom here. And then the two holes are here. So there's a piece, uh, just a metal thing that sticks out, just a chunk of metal and the two pins there. And then there's a, a hole on this side, which is where the, where it fits in. So that helps it align it too. Oh, there's one on this side too. There's a tiny little metal slat down here. Do this. And I can't do it literally at the same time, the top and bottom. Oh, yeah. So I was able to pull the top handle back a bit to fit this guy in there. I don't know if that's because I didn't fully tighten the screws, and that's why I was able to do that. And I'm using the same screws as all the others. Yes, I am. The bottom is facing me, so I'll do that first. Okay. So I, I screwed it till it was... It stopped moving. It stopped rotating with just my natural... With whatever current pressure I'm using to twist, once it stops, I don't push it anymore. But I do go until it, right there, I can't twist it anymore. Unless, maybe if I apply more pressure, but I'm not going to do that. So that was two screws down there and two screws up there. Okay. Adjust the gap and tighten the screws. Adjust the gap? What gap? This? What gap? The gap, how it sort of fell into place there? This little metal, the silver metal thing is for the camera strap, I think. All right, I've got one hole left and one screw left, so that's good so far. Okay. All right, and that's it. The other side is just the same instructions in another language. Okay. The box is now Empty, except for the thing, except for the manual. I'm going to squunch this back in. Wait, but I still have this big thing, this big screw. Isn't that to screw into the camera itself? Why isn't that in the instructions? They never mention that. Yeah, they never mention it. But that's definitely what it's for. So, and I assume that this bigger... Hex, which is, fit. no, 
this big hex does not, these are both the same size. They just gave me two of the same little hex thing, which was for the tiny screws, but they're not big enough for this. I have a tool, a hex screw for that, a hex screwdriver. So I'll have, it's not here, it's over there. I'll have to go get it, but interesting. Wait a minute, what is this hole here? Oh, I thought maybe it was in that little hole there. It's not. Is there anything underneath? Is there any other hex? I doubt it. I thought maybe there'd be some hidden little prize or something. Yeah, how how do you put a camera in this? I guess once the camera, the battery grip is in, this is the front of it. Here's the front side. So I would just take the camera and move it from the back and move it front and slide it in. I guess that's how you would do it. Oh! But I'm gonna keep building the cage before I do that, before I put the camera in. I wanna have a fully built cage. I kinda of wanna play with the camera, actually. Just, I wanna mess with its settings and everything and do all that. Maybe I should do that before I put it into a cage? I don't know. I mean, I have access to all the buttons and the settings and everything, but... Hmm. There's a little space here. I'm not sure what that's for. It's not the... Samsung, and yeah, there's no Samsung case back here. Oh! Right, I forgot that these come with a little hex screwdriver it's built into the cage. How freaking cool is that? Once I actually start taking this out on shoots, I'm probably going to take this out and put it in my bag because I can see that falling out anyway. It seems like it's pretty flush and strong on there, but... I don't want to risk it. <laughs> I don't want to risk it falling out and losing it. I don't. I just don't trust anything on set. I I I I have to put it away in the in a, in a case in its own case. I can't have it hanging out like that. All right, you can you fit in there. That is a tight fit. Oh whoa! Oh! That banged really hard, but. pretty hard itself, it can take a beating, so. And I, oh, I guess I shouldn't, because I want to put this in that box when I'm done, but I'm using it for a floor. Oh, using it for a mat. Oh, I could have put this in there too. Son of a bitch. All right, what is this? Small rig cable clamp. I will need that once I get a cable. This was the mini quick release NATO rail that will go on the top for the top handle. I kind of want to do the side handle first. That's the top handle. So these two things should stay together. Small rig NATO handle, but that's the NATO top handle. So this is the NATO, NATO handle that will connect to the NATO rail that is already molded into the cage. The cage already has a natural NATO rail as part of its design. I don't know why they couldn't just design a little bit extra. I see different names on each cage, different so like designed by this person, designed by that person. I don't know if these people are like full-time design employees of the company or if they had like contests and they chose the best designs that other people made. And if that's the case, did they get do they get like royalties and stuff? Each time a cage is sold, do they get a portion of the profits? Okay, so there's nothing else in the box there. Here's the handle. It comes in this plastic bag, and inside the plastic bag, I can see bubble wrap. They were very careful on this. So, yeah, this handle only holds the. Um, the Samsung drive. It doesn't then. There's not like a USB connection inside the handle. You just slide the drive in. I think there's a locking mechanism to keep it in there. And then you just you just can see the USB port of the drive exposed and you just plug your USB in there and you're good to go. Oh, that's something I want to get, a USB wire that might be better than what I get. Plastic bags can be dangerous. To avoid danger of suffocation, keep this bag away from babies and children. Uh, 
Another hex with two screws. Oh, here's the magic. Ooh. I don't know which way you hold it. That, that is a fat freaking, that is a big handle. It's way wider than I thought it would be, but it does have, it has to hold the drive. The, the coercer it has to hold the drive. So I think it's got to go, you, you can take this off and this for the NATO handle, so you can make it a right handle, or you can flip it to this side and make it a left handle. I know that. I just have to figure out which direction it... If it's on this side, I would assume the drive has to go top down. There's a locking mechanism here, but still, I wouldn't want that to be below, right? Let's look at a picture. Oh, but I'm using my phone to... The small rig right there. I feel like it's meant to be held like this, but then that would be upside down. It definitely feels like that's where your finger's supposed to go. It doesn't feel like that's supposed to be where your pinky goes at the bottom. Well, I'm just gonna go that way. Go. There's a little bit, there's about a quarter, oh, not even a quarter, there's, a, there's about an eighth of an inch a space still left on the NATO rail. So there's a little bit of wiggle room. If I wanted to move it up, I have about a quarter of an inch to go. I don't think so. I don't like that that's jiggling like that. I don't know what those two screws are for. Am I supposed to put other screws in? Because mm -hmm. okay. why would they brand small rig on the bottom if nobody's ever seeing it? The small rig's at the top. I feel like that's the way it would... And the wood would have to face out where the fingers are, right? Because there's little divots. Ugh. This does show that it is facing the way I have it. The flat part of that cutout in the center is down, is at the bottom. So it is correct. You do slide the SD drive from the bottom, I guess because um, the port for the USB cable would be on that side of the on the side of the thing of the handle. Okay, I guess since I'm working on the handle, actually now I guess could be the time. No, no, I'm gonna do. It. I'm gonna. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Take these little guys. I don't know what you need these extra screws for. Like what other screws do you have to tighten? There are other little holes there, but I don't know what you would put that into. Everything else tightens on its own, I looks like. This smushes the two metal pieces together. I don't know how that works. This is like one solid piece of metal. How is it bending the metal? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I will put these in this box here, though, for when I need it next. Put these away. So what is this? Small rig mini quick release. That's that's the other handles. What is this? This is the sun hood. Okay, so I definitely can wait on that. And this is all new to me. I mean, I have this cage, and I put this together, and it broke the HDMI port on my camera twice. Because there isn't a safety me mechanism, and my camera did wobble like this. And while the HDMI cable was clamped shut into one spot, the camera twisted, and th that made it bend the HDMI wire. And after that, I'm like, I I'm never going for a cheap camera cage again. And yeah, I know there's more expensive camera cages than this too, but I didn't want to get whatever this aftermarket it doesn't even have a name on it. And maybe actually the top handle that comes with that, I maybe could have. Just use that with this, but I, I just don't want to risk it. I don't want anything falling off or anything. Just, I wish I could remember how to open these boxes easily. It's something about squeezing from the sides or from the tops or the bottoms. I thought there was something about how you squeeze something. I'm just gonna tear it. There we go. Start as a tear, but didn't.
It's nowhere near as long as the one I have on the GH4, but it sure looks nice and premium. Uh, okay. So this is the NATO rail that will hold that guy. I don't know why this came in its own little special thing. That's interesting. I mean, it's very small. It doesn't... Some of these things don't need boxes either, but... If they went for boxes for everything else, why is this one thing that didn't? I guess it's just too, too small. Everything comes with its own hex. And this comes with its own hex built in. Every... Every piece of small rig, of a small rig cage, comes with its own little hex tool. That's freaking amazing. With its own two little screws. Ooh, very springy. So there it is, there's the hex tool right there. Have no idea how to install it, there's no instructions, I know it goes at the top. I guess I'll face the words the word small rig forward. But I line it up and put these two screws. Can these come out? Oh! There's only two screw holes that both line up with this hex. It's, um... That hole... And that hole, and put it there. That hole, and that hole. Seem to be the two that fit inside the small rig guy. Oh! My problem is I just overthink everything. Okay. I'm scared about this the most because if I put the NATO, you know, handle on it and I have this installed wrong and the thing just drops, I don't want that. Are they just, are they just, they're just little springs to, like a little safety spring? Oh. Yeah, now it won't slide sideways? Okay, that's cool. I dig that. And then I just find it, I'm going to try to make sure that absolutely equal amounts of each screw on each side are sticking out, so that's how I'm determining how centered it is. And try to tighten this without it sliding more, and it just slid a little bit. There we go. I don't know how tight to make it again. That's, I'm pushing a little extra hard. Okay. Oh, it's like right there on my wrist here. Hmm. My other one was long enough that it came way past my wrist, so no edge was cutting into my wrist. That's cutting a little bit. But uh, this little screw here tightens the hole here. I can stick a 15 millimeter rod through here and stick a 15 millimeter rod through there. And then I have a rod that's just a spot to clamp anything else onto. Another monitor, a light, a microphone. Um, but then I'll, I'll, this handle itself has tons of holes for all of that, but I guess I wouldn't be using those holes for anything if I'm using it to using it for my hand. I think the cable clamp can attach. Let's put all this away first. What was this one screw? That was in the bag also? The heck would you screw into there? I'm getting a headache. Just from my nervousness and figuring this all out. NATO handle, all right. Or, yeah, no, I mean cable clamps. Oh my god. Another, fit in that tiny little box. Another hex wrench somehow fit in there. How, wait, how did you fit in there? What? Sideways? That is crazy. It's like a magic trick. I know how this works, I just gotta figure out how you install it. Oh, but I already see, as soon as I was saying that. Wait. There's no screws here. Oh, these metal things are the screws. Okay, I see. 
there are one, two, three, four holes where this cable clamp can go, and the top three are together. The bottom fourth is a little bit of a ways away. So what happens if I try to screw anything onto the very bottom screw? I guess I need to know where the ports of the camera are gonna be to know where I'm gonna need to mount this, right? Oh yeah, that does not line up. If I do the bottom hole, then the top hole is smack in the in the middle of... Yeah, so it's gotta be this top stuff here, okay. There go. Unscrew it in enough that it holds the cable clamp, but not tight enough that I can't... What? Okay, well, it, it's on. It's gonna rattle, but it's it's on. What the hex wrench is for, then? Ooh, this can go in all sorts of angles? Whoa, what the freak? Put this little hex guy away. I have no idea what the hex wrench is used for when it comes to the cable clamp. I see nothing on the cable clamp that suggests there's anything to hex screw. These screws themselves screw in with my fingers. Why doesn't this come with instructions? Dang it. Let's go for the T5. T I'm going for the T5. This also has tape. So these screws I will now screw back into the bottom here. This cage also has something written on the bottom of it, pointing to certain screws for DJI RS2, RSC2. the hell was that? Oh, it snaps off? That scared me. Open without bending the top there. How about that? Okay. 2TB Windows Mac Android. What about iOS? I guess iOS doesn't use external drives. It can operate them. Whoa, it almost looks black. What were these light blue businesses? Yeah, and it looks black on here. I just thought maybe the artwork was, I don't know. I, I thought when I would take it out, it looked bluish, but it, it matches the color of the box. As it should, really, when you think about it. <laughs> I just, every picture that I remember seeing of the T5 was like a teal blue, which I didn't like. I didn't like that color, but I like this color, but I'm not gonna see it because it's gonna be, it's gonna be tucked away in a handle. I press on the bottom. So a little hole for me to press this thing up and out. Oh! A little uh, recycle icons on the left side there. I know it has to be formatted. I don't know if you can format these drives properly for use on these cameras using the camera. Does the camera have a drive format option or not? I don't know. Okay, so here's the SSD and the Documentation in English is just here. Everything else here is the same thing in another language. For all Samsung portable state drives, caution, warranty on data, warranty and support when password is lost. T5 is equipped with advanced encryption technology whereby user data can be cannot be accessed if a password is lost or forgotten. In the event the password is lost or forgotten, the only solution is to have it factory reset at a service center, which will inevitably bring permanent erasure of all data. In such events, Samsung and its agents are not responsible for any loss of data contained on your T5 serviced. Okay, that's interesting. I didn't know this. Um, the interface is a USB 3.1 Gen 2, aka USB 3.2. So it's 10 gigabytes per second, or gigabits? Gigabytes, gigabits, backwards compatible, which is what the SanDisk is that I also got. Interesting. So this is kind of, this is future-proofed as well. I didn't realize that, but the read speeds are less. Maximum transfer rate, 540 megabytes. That's fine, but the read speed is something different. I think the, the SanDisk has a 
bigger read speed. And it comes with two USB cables. One is a USB-C to USB-C. The other is a traditional USB-A to a USB-C. So this could connect to a computer. And this will be the wire that connects to um, the camera. Because my camera's USB-C and the drive is USB-C. So I guess I will take this guy out by itself. Just gonna turn this thing upside down, all well, sideways, I guess. It's unlocked. There's a USB at the top, so I guess I will... That means the Samsung logo would be facing out and the S would go in first. Ooh, the scratching. Ooh, I don't like it. I don't like the scratching noise. Turn it upside down so gravity puts it down as far as it will go gravity-wise and there's no extra force. And while it's upside down, I will go ahead and tighten this just enough until I can't tighten it anymore. And that's cool. So if this is sticking, if this little clip is sticking out, I can pull it out and rotate it around without actually tightening anything, which is what um, my man Frodo does. And then there's one little extra clip for even more security, just a little table underneath. Yeah, there's something down there. I, I see the, I see the drive down there. Can I fit this into that slot? Oh yeah, okay. I didn't think it was wide enough, but there you go. It would be nice to have a, maybe I should get another cable clamp for right here. Oh God, I wonder if I should, can you do that? Can I fit this on there? I'm gonna take this off right now and find out. The whole point of the cable clamps are so that cables don't fall out, but <laughs> if I'm only protecting one side, Especially, especially if it's the side that is the handle that my hand is always touching. I'm gonna cut around. Do you see if I do? Yeah, okay. And then. It is holding it in place. It's just a little awkward in its angled way. Oh, I was gonna say, like, maybe I should flip it upside down, but I don't know. I don't think you can. If I flip this, if I took this thing off and flipped it the other way, then the fingers aren't where they need to be. I'm not, I'm not as wild about that, uh, the wire sticking up like that, and it's kind of moving around. Hmm. Not terribly wild about that. But we shall proceed to give you what you need. I say the next thing we do is the battery grip. Let me go ahead and open this up. Great. I like how they tape it shut, like so there's no way of hiding if somebody tried to get into this thing. I'm just going to So it does feel like this is just one thing of plastic. I don't know how they... And here's the battery grip box. Okay. I you open it from this way. All right. I almost opened it up from the bottom. Two pieces of tape. I assume... 
the Adorama tape that as well because this is I saw the pictures of the actual unit on the eBay listing. Okay, there it is. This looks clean. Ooh, I love that felt material at the bottom. That's really nice. This looks perfect. I don't see any marking. Maybe the tiniest, tiniest little thing where the information is, like the faintest little, not even a scratch, just sort of a... Like somebody sort of brushed across it with a pencil, just in a tiny little specific spot. Okay. It does need to take one battery, so I'm going to put a battery into it. I'm going to put this a battery into it, because it doesn't come with its own battery. I don't know if this is charged or not. Probably not, or maybe at like 50%, I don't know. But I just want to get a battery into it at the moment. Hmm, new technology smell. <laughs> what is this little guy? Wow, look at that little guy. That's just a little... What a chunky sound. I think there's a piece that comes in that little square like a cover when you're not using it, but they even have a little hole. Like, was that hole always meant for the little hole on this, or was that used for something else? And they're like, oh, well, we can also use the, we can use it for a pin. I have to take this cover off this port right here. Oh my god. This guy needs to come off. Right. Yeah, I wish that they have this one screw, but there's two screws here. Uh, I wish they just had two screws rather than the one little pin, but that's fine. One and only time you'll see them. Well, I'm gonna have to take this off to charge the battery. Actually, maybe not. Even if this is totally discharged, I can attach this guy on here, put in the two batteries that probably also need to be charged, but then when they're both charged, pop it onto here, and those two will charge this one. Oh, it'll never see that charger. It'll never use the charger that it came with. Frightening. This is so frightening. You want? You're on. Wiggling that around because of this. I'm doing it the right direction. Oh, yeah, there it is. Mm, I'm getting the smell, the new, <laughs> the new smell. It smells delicious. That too tight, I'm gonna actually loosen it up a bit. I mean, I have the cage, so I don't wanna... S I am noticing that the um, the little spinning thing here that tightens is a tiny, tiny, tiny bit in front of the vents. I hope that's not too much. Okay, stands on its own. Don't know if these come with any power. Here's one that I opened up before that with a ripped box. I feel like they're meant to be like impossible to open without ruining it. So people, once again, it's a safety precaution. It's, you know that it's been tampered with. Don't cut the battery. I don't want to get battery juice on me. <clears throat> Now things are assembled and out of their boxes and I just want to hurry up and figure it out before something goes wrong or, I don't know. 
and there's already a fingerprint on the screen protector of the screen. So this little piece I gotta be real careful about. So how do I open up this? I uh, press, press down, pull out, oh. Ooh, it's just a little hinge, what does that mean? Oh, it twists, whoa. Okay, and there's also numbers. There's a two with an arrow pointed that way and a one with an arrow pointed that way. So I guess I place the metal thing facing that direction. Or wherever the holes are, and the holes are on that side, I think. There it goes. What the? What in the hell oh, was that all about? This is right, right? Wait, hold on. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now it's smooth. There was a red light. Oh my god, I hear it. I hear a motor running. Oh, very electric -y motor. It's getting higher pitched. Select a language, English. Okay, I selected okay. Now it's a black screen. Is that because, are we on? And it's just this cover? Oh yeah, that was the other thing I gotta... I gotta attach my lens, of course. Let's click on menu. Yep, yeah, there's the menu. Oh my god. It's selected on Blackmagic RAW, constant bitrate, 8.1, 6K, the full full resolution 6K. Um, how many pages are on the report section? It's on film for dynamic range, sensor area 6K, it's on 24 frames a second, is there 2398? There is, okay. 2398, I've changed it to off-speed recording is off. The off-speed frame rate is thus grayed out. Preferred card recording, see fast card is selected. So I'm gonna go... I guess it doesn't matter if I'm going to USB. I don't know. Stop recording if card drops frame is on. Yes, I want that. Time lapse off, detail sharpening off, apply LUT in file off. I'm gonna mess with the detail sharpening because sometimes this camera looks a little too soft for me. It's funny because like all the other cameras seem too sharp and I was always softening it up by a bit. And now this almost seems a little too too soft. But I'll play with I'll turn this on, it's just detail sharp, it's just on or off. That's the only that's the option. It doesn't seem like there's any Oh no, you can turn it on and there's default medium or high. Capture one frame every how many seconds? Ten seconds, whatever, but it's off. And then that's the third page. Alright, monitor. L C D, HDMI, viewfinder, all. It's on L C D. Clean feed is on. Display 3D LUT off. Zebra off, focus assist off, frame guide off, grid on, safe area guide off, false color off. And next page, status text on, display meters, does that mean meters, or codec and resolution. It's on meters right now. Screen brightness 50%. Okay. HDMI can do all the same things, all right. All, there's LCD, HDMI, viewfinder, and all. All, there's frame guides, what? Guide opacity, focus assist is peak or colored lines, focus assist level, low, medium, high, medium is selected. Frame guides is 241, guide opacity is 50%, focus color is red. What other colors are there? Green, blue, white, black, red. That's cool. My camera is blue for one type of focus assistant, and then green for the other for like extra, extra detail. I'll go for blue. Zebra level is 95. Test. Oh, it's hearing me. The little camera, the little microphone they're going. Set up. Date and time. 2021, 5, 26. So was that when this was made? And then 355. So this is manufactured at 3. Is that a 24 hour clock? So it's, oh no, it's at 356. Is it 56 at all? 45? No, it's, it's like 3 minutes off in the minute section and way off of the three. So is this manufactured on 526 at 355? Flicker free shutter based on 50 hertz or 60 hertz. Shutter angle or shutter speed, it's, it's shutter angle. Display ND filter as number, stop, or fraction. Time code drop frame is off. 
set function buttons, F1 is selected, toggle is selected, LCD is selected. Tally light, tally light LED is on, I'll probably turn that off. LED brightness, low, medium, high. LED for what? Oh, for the tally light? Okay. Auto dim display is off, but you can dim it after 10 minutes, five minutes or one minute. Hardware ID, I don't know if I should read that on camera. Software is 7.3.1. Playback all clips or single clip, it's selected all clips. I don't know what that means. I guess so if I hit play on one clip, it'll just automatically go to the next one. Bluetooth off, disconnect the current device is grayed out. No device is currently connected to this camera. Presets is blank. LUTs, Gen 5 Film to Extended Video. Gen 5 Film to Rec 2020 PQ is the third one. Gen 5 Film to Rec 2020 Hybrid Log Gamma. Gen 5 Film to Video. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Okay. Let's turn this off. Flash red for a second. Okay. And then one off. So, we have this. I'm so dizzy. I'm getting so, so dizzy. I guess I'll attach this to the lens and then try to make sure, see if the lens goes onto this. I don't even want to take this lens cap off till the very last second. I don't want any dust or anything. And seeing as we have a cat walking around. And this is, there is no glass in this, as I mentioned before. So just attaching this to the lens doesn't mean anything. Um, the lens can still be exposed. This lens had the speed booster on it before, so no dust was getting into it there either. I think it probably goes this way. So there's a red dot. So I'll probably line up with this red dot. Is that on properly? It screwed pretty. No, it just came off. All right. Yeah, I think that's on. I think that's on. How tight can I make it? That's what she said. Mm, I don't know. The thing just keeps spinning around. I mean, I'm, I'm pushing and it can keep moving. I don't know how far it can. Oh, I think it just started to click. Oh, I think that was fully on. How do you get this off then? Oh, okay. I press that little metal. Oh yeah, I see the little, I see the little button click. Okay. It's that little button. Okay. There's a red dot right there. Do I have to press? Oh, it doesn't unscrew. I just have, I have to press a button and unscrew it. Interesting. There's a sensor. I don't even want to spend time looking at it. Please God, let this connect. Oh my God, it's connected. It's fucking connected. Okay, I can adjust the blue rings. Oh my God. Mississippi to, oh, it took like two seconds. Oh, there we go, it was very dark, but I had the iris on the, in the wrong direction. It's all the way open, holy crap. Look at this. This is nuts. It is loud, I mean, I can hear the How would you not hear that in, in a movie? How would a microphone not hear that? What the heck? Can this, can the camera pick it up? Can you hear it if I... Man, I know all the cinema cameras are, are can be loud. They have their... ND, ND, ND. Okay, so... Battery three is red, battery two is all the way filled, and battery one is exactly halfway. It's on ISO 400 and white balance 5600, and tint is at 10. I don't know why the tint is already there. This looks, the white balance already looks proper. I guess because I have my, it's at 5600 and my light I have set for that temperature. Oh yeah, look, see? You can see the screen on I'm, closer to you. I'm, I'm not holding it by the lens, I'm holding it by the body. So you can see the features that are already on there. And that's crazy, so I can pull this out and... Yeah. Look 
from the bow, look from below, and raise it up. So let's go into our menu. And let's see about, um, what was the, what does S do? That's the shutter button, okay. Is the ISO? I wanted to do something I don't remember now. Oh, the focus assist, right. I wanted to turn on the focus assist. Monitor, grid is on, focus assist is off. Now it says it's on. There it is, yep, they went blue. The thing I wanted to focus on is in blue. Dark as the image is, it's still sharp. My GH4 had a problem, um, had problems showing that. Um, and there is levels of, of focus. Okay, there's the guides, very cool. Okay, so they're just guides, they're not actually cropping. There's 239 and then 24 and then 235. And they, they, have all, they have all on thirds, horizon line. Oh, so that's the, right, that's the stabilization that they might actually be able to use it as a stabilization. Crosshair or a dot. That, would anything get burned into the LCD? That's like a title safe or an action safe? What the hell is this? That's the false color. There you go, there are zebras, okay. Just because you hit the icon doesn't mean it turns on. You have to hit the icon, it brings up the, the tools for it in which you can turn it on. I saw 400, goes from 200, 400, 1250, 320 to 830. Thousand. There's more. There's more options than that. Or yeah, five, six, four, eight. Oh, look how grainy it is. Whoa, it's so grainy. That one thousand. Oh my gosh. But then, boop, twelve fifty. It's clean again. <laughs> I know. I know how your dual ISO stuff works. Oh, it's really blue. Or is that the focus peaking? That even might be the focus peaking that's highlighting the noise. Hmm. Let's go back to the focus peaking, turn it off. Oh yeah, it was just, it was just, I thought that was a noise. It was the focus peaking blue. The noise is so prevalent, prevalent that the focus peaking set to high was showing it. So now we're at ISO 10,000, 125,000, not 100,000, 10,000, 25,600. And the, ISO, the native ISOs were 400 and 3200, but you want to shoot a high ISO in bright light because there's more dynamic range, I know that. Oh, it doesn't look that way. Oh, it goes away. That was when I can see the, the uh, UV filter is dirty as hell. But I'm glad it's the UV filter that's dirty and not my actual uh, lens, I'll tell you that much. Okay, cage time. Um, I'm gonna have to find a safe place to put this. I'm not just gonna put it in the box. I'm putting it in the box for now, but that's definitely going to have to change. And if I leave the lens on it, my, my plan is to just keep everything attached. The cage is on it, everything's attached, and the whole thing can just go into a case that holds everything together and proper. But I think actually, for the time being, actually, actually I'm going to take this off. I'm so freaked out. Yeah, I don't have to like worry about this every time, about it getting scratched. I'm gonna set it and forget it. Big screw that's built into this, of course. Oh, it's going in there. I guess it was lined up, perfect. So that just went right on in. That just slid right on in there. Give it extra torque using the tall one. Yeah, I can get some a lot more twisties in here. So I actually do need to remove this top handle, don't I? So I can see the top screw here. I see a top screw slightly angled, is that right? This whole thing looks like it's slightly in an angle. I guess it could be, I guess you could put an angle, okay. So no, you don't attach this cage to the top of the camera? Really? It 
just screws to the bottom of the camera? But then this thing does move. What? Then this thing can bend around. Hold on. No, hold on. Wait a minute. I don't accept this. I do not accept this. This can't be right. I don't accept that at all. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Thank God I caught that. I knew something seemed fishy. So this definitely goes right in there. Oh, man. There we go. Now it's not going to flip, flim, flam, flip, flap around. Oh, we're getting there. Okay. So you can slightly unalign this, disalign, inalign, whatever the word has to be better aligned. I do not want to do this every time. It'll take me way too long to set up on set. I just want to pull this thing out. I mean, I mean it, the worst, like, the cage can be separate from the camera, but at least the cage is all assembled. Okay. There's no flim flam flipping around. There's a screw at the top and the bottom. Very good. And I got this handle here. So now I can shoot like that. Switches. A little hard to get to the power switch, but that is a damn good thing because I don't want to accidentally turn this thing on and off. Okay, now it's on with no lens. I don't feel good about, I'm going to be totally honest, I don't feel good about that, the motor sound. I know that it's just what, it just is a natural thing that comes with this camera. I gotta say, I don't, I don't like it. Make sure that's sturdy. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I'm not used to it. Hey, Mr. Wee. I'm not gonna plug in the SD drive yet, but I guess I will. Actually, I need to see what it's like to pull these. Oh, gosh, yeah, how would you... It's very difficult to get to the, um, the rubber things that are holding it protecting it to really poke in there. But there you go. Look at these ports. Whoa. Wow. The P tap, is it like is there like a red coloring of something in there? Yeah, there's like a red colored band thing. That's awesome. Looks so badass, the red. All right, it's in. But yeah, let's it's, it's, take this out. Wrap it around this way. That's probably the best way to do it. Now the wire's a little bit more out of, out of my way. Well, not really, actually. Hmm. I think I should probably get a longer wire so I don't have to worry about it. And this rubber thing presses up against it, but. I can figure something out. This cable is very short, um, so it's probably not good to have this. I need more length to hide it around. I don't want to be bumping this USB cable, that's for sure. Let's turn it on now and see, does it recognize the USB drive at all? Oh, 344 minutes. Sam dot 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 T5. Can I touch it? Yes, I can. I can get 344 minutes. It says XFAT. There is a format drive button. I'm just gonna go ahead and say format before I do anything with it, just format it. OSX extended or XFAT? I think XFAT is what they said it should be. It was already XFAT, but I'm gonna hit format drive. Format external drive. This will erase all data and rename your drive to A001. Uh, okay. Format drive by holding the format button for three seconds. Two, one. There's a little 
countdown. Formatting, external drive, with four little blue dots flashing. I need to check the firmware. Oh yeah, the, the, I can. I guess I'll know if it's the latest firmware update by checking to see if there's a screen calibration option. Formatting complete. Your drive is ready to use. 63 MB, 2 TB, 344 minutes. 344 minutes. Wow. That's it. 8. 8 to 1. There's 3 to 1, but we'll actually record at 3 to 1. Right, that's... Can I half press this to... How do I get to that again? Oh, my head. Is it in setup? Where do I find the hard drive section? Record, I guess. Another page on the record. I guess I can just hit the 129. 129. Wee wee. Wee wee. I'm going to use Leo as my inaugural footage.